Hey folks, what's going on? Today we're gonna to be looking at another example of how we can use the new Particles GPU that was released in 2022 and some of the really great new features it has. Now in this video, what we're gonna be doing is actually looking at probably one of the most exciting features that I found on it, which is the ability to add forces. Now, if you remember using the previous version of the Particles GPU, probably one of the biggest things that everyone wished it had was the ability to do things like attraction forces, repelling forces, vortex or spiral forces in a similar way that the particle SOP does, but with the ability to scale it because of the GPU acceleration. Now, one of the great things about this new 2022 version of Particles GPU is it does allow us to do just that. So we get the best of both worlds with a lot of the forces that we love to use when we combine meta balls, the force SOP, and particle SOP, but with that ability to scale into hundreds of thousands of particles and lots and lots of forces. So what I'm gonna do here is delete everything in my network and we're gonna start again from scratch here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is open up my palette. I'm gonna to go to dialogues at the top and I'm gonna grab the palette browser here. Inside of the top left, I'm gonna to select tools and I'm gonna find the particles GPU here and I can drag and drop that into my network. Now by default, like we saw in the last video, it's gonna have this preset and probably in an update coming soon to Touch Designer, this will probably automatically already have the camera homed in the right position. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit the plus button myself for now to activate the viewer, click inside of it and hit H just so I can home it so I can see the whole boundaries of this particle system. Now we looked at a lot of the different features that the new particle GPU has, especially a lot of the kind of important parameters that you're gonna play with. In this case, what we're gonna do is start on the forces page, because if we go down on the forces page, we're gonna see two parameters here. One of them is the extra forces chop, and this is a reference to a chop, and the other is display external forces. Now in this case, the first thing we're gonna do is learn how to set up and control these external forces. Now, if you remember from the last video, inside of the particles GPU are actually a ton of example chops and tops that kind of define what is going on with a lot of these new lookups and kind of references that you can use to feed in data. And the same is true for the forces. So if we actually scroll down to close to the bottom left area, we can see that there's this nice comment box that tells us extra forces definition. And we have a little note here that says, these are the default chops for specifying extra forces. This can be a multi-sample chop with each sample defining a new force, which is gonna be really important. We're gonna look at that today as well. So we can define multiple forces. And this nice little note is important, which we'll come back to, but it essentially defines the force type because it's gonna be based on an index. So we just need to remember that we can always come here and reference to see which index is which type of force. Now, what I can see here is this little extra comment with the blue, and this is our default extra force definition. So this tells me essentially, what are the channels that I need to feed into this reference in order to fully be able to control my forces? So a nice thing I can even do is even just click on this constant extra force hit control C or Apple key C to copy it, and then go back up a level into my main area of project and just paste that here. Now we can even just start using this immediately without even having to define the channels and name them ourselves. So I find this a really easy and great thing to do. Now, before we go ahead and start using it, I will go ahead and create a null chop because we are gonna be adding a few more bits of processing in between our kind of force definition here and where we're going to reference from the particles GPU. So now that I have my null, I can click on particles GPU here on the forces where I have this extra forces chop. And if you've never worked with a lot of these reference parameters, a good trick I always say is if you see the name of the parameter, a big string field that lets you type, and then more importantly, this little gray arrow that kind of points to something, that immediately should tell you that this is a reference type of parameter. So I can go ahead, grab my null one here, and I can just drag and drop that onto this parameter. And then we'll see the dotted reference line. And we're almost ready to actually start using this force. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the constant here. 
And I can see there's already a few parameters turned on, but the most important one that we need is not turned on, which is this force amount. Because with force amount set to zero, it's basically like this is turned off by default. So what I can do is inside of my parameters here, set my force amount to one, and I can already see something changed inside the middle of my particle environment here. So I can activate my viewer with A and kind of click and drag around to look around, middle click and drag to zoom in. Now, this is where the display extra forces button comes in handy because it can be really hard if you've worked with meta balls and the particle sop to actually see what's going on a lot of the time. And if we turn this display extra forces button on, what it's going to do is inside of the actual render here, it's gonna give us a little kind of purple magenta wire frame of some kind of polygon. I should know what it's called, but it's probably a something something hedron. You know what I'm talking about. So in this case, I can actually see that's where my force is. And as those particles are kind of entering that force, they are moving and doing something. So let's go ahead and start playing with our constant extra force here. And we can look at what some of these parameters do. So what I'll do is I'll also make this a little bit bigger here, my particles GPU, just so I can see it while I am playing with my parameters. Now, the first three parameters that we have here are the force POS, which is short for position, and then we have XYZ. So those are pretty self-explanatory. So for example, if I middle click and drag on that parameter, or in, if you don't have a middle click, a nice trick you can do is just left click and hold on the parameter long enough you'll get the little parameter uh, ladder here, the value ladders. So we can see if I start moving these on the X axis, I'm moving that force around, similar on the Y axis and similar on the Z axis. So that is pretty nice, self-explanatory. We can control those positions. Now, if you're already starting to think about ways you can use this, one of the great things that you can start thinking about is that, well, right now I have a constant. I've got some parameters for X, Y, Z. It would be really easy for me to grab connect positions of joints, leap motion, positions, mouse positions, and really just drag and drop them on top of these parameters and start referencing and controlling those things really, really easily. So those positions are very easy to control. The radius is the size of our actual force field here. So the bigger we make that, the more, I mean, bigger the force field gets and the more particles are gonna be sucked into that force field, the radius uh, the force amount, I should say, is how strong the force is inside of that. So these are parameters that you're probably going to want to play with because they're going to give you such different results. So for example, some fun things to think about, you could have a force that is very large that maybe sucks a whole particle system into it, but that only has a very little bit of force. And in which case it kind of is just really gently moving things around. And, you know, that could be a really gentle dynamic movement from that particle system moving in and out of that field. You could, on the other hand, go the other direction and have a force that's actually very small, but with a very high amount of force that's gonna be kind of very, very intense. And as it moves through that field is really gonna pull and push those particles around. Now you can think of any kind of scenario in between, but it's really fun to play with all of those. The one thing I will say for force amounts that's good to be aware of, if you haven't played with the meta ball sop or the force sop before, one of the things you quickly learn is that positive force amounts are usually going to be attractors, but you can also take your force amount into the negative and create repelling forces. So in this case, a negative force is also completely valid and is going to act as a kind of repelling force instead of an attracting force in most cases. So I'm going to go ahead and set this back to an attracting force, maybe a four, and I'll turn up my radius to about three, just so I can get a lot of these particles ooh, going active and doing things. So now we get to this force type here. Now this force type, if you remember before, is what I was mentioning was a really great thing for us to go back inside of the particles GPU, and we can see these definition of these indices here. So I can see if my force type was set to zero, it would be a radial force. If it was set to one, it would be an axial force, two is a vortex force, and three is a spiral force. So in this case, right now, by default, it is set to a force type of two, which is a vortex force. In this case, I'm gonna set it back to radial, which is a very, very common force type to have. So I can set my force type to zero. 
And now we can see that all of those particles are getting sucked into the middle of this system. And you can go ahead and experiment again with those same things I was saying. We could try what happens if I decrease the force amount. You know, things are getting sucked in, but they do have a little bit more movement inside of there. I can also make this a smaller kind of force field. And we can see that some of the particles actually even do end up escaping out the other side. So there's a lot of really interesting things you can do here. And it's really easy to change these different types of forces just by changing this index. Now, all these are going to have different looks. So by all means, have fun playing with them. And actually, we can see if I set this back to radial, because my force amount is one, it's sucking particles into it. But if I set this to something like negative two, it's actually going to push all those particles away. So none of the particles are going to be able to get inside of this force field because as they approach that force field, we can see they all kind of get pushed away around the edges of it. So there's a lot of really fun effects you can do with this. So the last set of parameters that we have here are the force direction. And you can see we have an X, Y, Z for these. Now, one thing to know is that these don't apply to every single force type. So you're going to have to experiment with which force types they work. And actually a good reference for that is if you do look at the force SOP, it has very similar parameters here. And we can see that radial force actually doesn't have direction options to it. It's only the axial, vortex, and spiral forces that actually have directions. So in this case, even before I can see what these directions do, I have to switch to one of my other forces. So I could go ahead and switch this to maybe force three, which in this case is going to be a spiral force. And then I can start to experiment by saying, what happens if I really crank up the X version of this? So now we can see that that force is actually being applied more strongly on the X axis than it is on the Z axis. I could even say, you know what? I want some Y turbulence to be added, or I should say a lot of Y turbulence. And now there's going to be a lot of pressure of that force being applied on the actual Y axis. So you can play with this as well and get really creative about maybe the force only impacts one axis like the Y axis, whereas the X and Z are just kind of going through the particles and natural forces or maybe the turbulence. So this gives you a really interesting other layer for how you can control what those forces are doing to the particles. Now, with that said, that kind of gives you a basic understanding of how you can really quickly and easily start controlling these forces with the particles GPU. And the last thing we're going to look at is how to actually scale that to have more forces. So in this case, we just have one constant chop here with one set of parameters. But if we remember inside of the extra forces definition in the particles GPU, it said this can be a multi sample chop with each sample defining a new force. So that's really good sign for us that we could do something even as simple as copying our constant extra force here and imagine that each one of these is a fully separate force. And all we have to do is kind of join those together to make a multi sample data set. Now, this is really easy because what we can do is right click on this wire in between our constant extra force and the null one, select insert operator, create a join chop. And the join chop is very similar to the merge chop, whereas the merge kind of adds and appends your channels kind of in a top to bottom format. The join chop appends the chops in a kind of more sample oriented format. So when I take this second constant here and I plug it into the join, now I'm going to have the data from my first constant is going to be the first sample of information. And the data from my second constant is actually going to be the second sample of information here. And I can do the same thing with my third constant. And that's going to give me the third sample of information. And now what we're going to really see interestingly is as I, and let me make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. As I start to move these other forces around, we now have multiple forces being visualized inside of this same network. So not only is the visualization a great way to scale this, but now it's also super easy for us to control because we don't have to worry about how can I control these different forces? It's going to become a really tricky chop situation. Maybe I have to do shuffling. And if you're new to touch designer, shuffling gets to be kind of intimidating. But this can really stay as simple as saying, you know what? I'm going to have four players in my experience. I'm going to copy and paste four of these constants. 
Now I have four sets of forces and maybe I can have a connect controlling one of them, a leap motion controlling the other, maybe a UI for the third one, and you know, Bob's your uncle on the fourth one, however you wanna control it. And each one of these is gonna work purely independently. And the nice thing is all of them are being accelerated on the GPU, which means that this really, you can see here, I've got probably a couple hundred thousand particles running right now. I've got four forces that are all kind of different and doing different things. I'm recording the screen and I'm still running this at 60 FPS. So that really shows you kind of the advantage of this GPU acceleration. So with that said, this shows you how to dive into using these forces. We're gonna have a bunch more videos about this new particle GPU because it really does open up a lot of creative potential for folks that wanna take their particle systems and scale them using that GPU acceleration. So we'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.